With the help of Hashem, we are learning Psachim Daf Tzadik Ches Daf Tzach. We began the Mishnah yesterday. Let's review the Mishnah now by heart. If a person designated a female animal for the Pesach, and the Pesach has to be a male animal, as it says explicitly in the Chumash, or if a person designated an animal that is already beyond its first year of life, also the Torah writes that the animal for the Pesach has to be Dafka within the first year, this animal from the outset was never valid to be used as a Pesach, says the Mishnah that the animal has to be left to pasture until it gets blemished and with its money after you sell it because it's blemished and therefore you are allowed to sell it, you buy a shlamim. And that is a tremendous chiddush as we spoke out on the Rashi and as we'll begin learning today in the Gemara. In other words, that you might have thought that since it was rejected from the outset and what was the base of the last two daf, that if something was fit and rejected, oh, then it cannot be used itself for, the pay, for, for a shlamim, and therefore you have to sell it and with its proceeds buy a shlamim. Over here, one might have thought that milachatchila, it was never fit. So therefore we should never label it rejected, but we do. We consider this a rejected animal, which is why even though the, the, the value of it has to be used for a shlamim, the animal itself may not be used for a shlamim. What we did not speak out yesterday, quickly to say, is the second to last toys for some daf tzadik zayin omid beis. And he makes a very important point. He says, hold on, if all of this happened before Pesach, then the proceeds will not be used for a shlamim. Then the proceeds will be used for a Pesach. Very important. In other words, even though this animal was a female, okay, and dichoy meikara, it's called a rejected animal, but the yid has to bring a Pesach. When the Mishnah says that with the value, with the sale of this animal after it's blemished, you buy a shlamim, that's only if the person already bought a Pesach, it's after this month of Pesach, and therefore the money has to be used dafke for a shlamim. That was din number one. Then on, daf, on top of daf tzadik ches amadalev, we had din number two. Din number two, mamish, appears to be contradicting din number one. What's din number two? That if a person designated the Pesach, Let's speak about a case where he's the only person that was registered on the Pesach. And the person passes away. So we explained yesterday that we don't consider the heir, Mamish, fitting into the shoes of the father. We don't consider this animal simply always being an animal upon which one is registered, the father, and then, then automatically the son. We don't say that. The son would have to register himself on the animal. The problem is, is that once an animal was already designated for a Pesach, it may not remain minuiless, if that's a word, or ownerless. And if it was ownerless for a moment, then it's rejected. It can't be used for a Pesach. So what should you do with it? So the Mishnah says, ah, you should use this animal for a shlamim. And the obvious question is, whoa, if there is an issue with an animal remaining even one moment after it was designated for a Pesach, ownerless or meanerless, so l'chayda, then the animal should be left to pasture and it should be sold and the, its proceeds should be used to buying a shlamim. That's not what the Mishnah says. The Mishnah says that this animal itself is going to be brought for a shlamim. That's something that the Gemara will have to explain. Now we're going to begin... The Gemara, guys, we're going to begin with the Gemara saying, as it does many times, Shema Minotlas, that there are three fundamental rules that we learn from the Dinim and the Mishnah. Balichaim Nidachim, we'll explain each one when we learn the Gemara. Dichui Meikara is considered a rejection. There is a concept of Dichui in an animal that only had Kedushas Damim, never having Kedushas Aguf. And then we're going to learn the following. We learned in the early tzaddiks and tzaddik Aleph, if you remember, that Koydim call our Tanoim followed the opinion that Aninus only by day is Midoy Raisa. And the rabbinic Aninus of night was waived in order to allow people to bring the carbon Pesach. So theoretically, an Oynan is someone, not only theoretically, in actuality, an Oynan could be included and should be included in the carbon Pesach, even if he is an Oynan on the 14th. But you can have only an Oynan um, to be the registered person on a Pesach, because there's a possibility that during the burial, if you're doing this prior to the burial, during the burial, he might become Tommy. 
And if he'll become Tommy Bitumas Mace, then he won't be allowed to eat it. So that's what we learned on the beginning of the tzaddiks. And now we're going to add a very important increase, Aknech. That when do we say that an Oynan should not be the only one registered on a carbon Pesach because he or she might become Tomei? That is only if the person became obligated, if the person became an Oynan before the obligation of Pesach was, uh, uh, came upon the person. But if the person becomes an oinen only after noon, in other words, first the person felt the obligation of bringing a carbon Pesach, and then the person became an oinen, this person, the Chachamim said, will not be contaminate himself. And therefore, yes, he could be counted, he could be the only registered person on the carbon Pesach. The Mishnah then, well, we're going to learn a lot of Mishnahis today. I mean, we just said one by heart, we're going to learn another two Mishnahis. What happens if three animals get mixed, an oila, an asham, and, and a shlamin. And you have to appreciate that each one of these, I'm sorry, a Pesach, a Pesach, a Asham, and an Oila. Each one of these Karbanais have a different blood avoida, or at least they have with the two groups of blood avoidas, but each one of these animals are eaten completely differently. The Pesach is completely eaten by the owners. The Asham is only eaten by Kahana. The Oila is not eaten at all. What exactly do you, do you do in such a scenario? What are you going to do if you have a Pesach that's mixed with, mixed with a Bukhar? If you remember, we learned that a Bukhar may not be sold. The Torah says, Ach, lo yifta, you can't redeem it. Selling it is one way of redeeming it. Actually, we learned that if a person sells their Bukhar, the money remains chulen and the animal remains kaidish. And we're going to see how this affects the mixture of a Pesach and a Bukhar, and on Dav Tzadik Chesam at Beis, we're going to spend most of today learning a Mishnah. It's a very long Mishnah. Then the Mishnah is going to have two parts to it, with many details. First part will be where a group designated a carbon Pesach, and we're going to call that Pesach Aleph, and they lost Pesach Aleph. So they sent from their group, one of them, they appointed them into their Shliach, go find Pesach Aleph. They were not certain that the shliach will be, will be successful, so they also brought carbon base. They brought another carbon and they offered carbon base. And we're going to learn many nuances in such a scenario. When ultimately it was discovered that both of these psachim were brought. And guys, don't forget that a person can only be registered on one Pesach. We also learned that a person can withdraw his or her registration at least Lakula Alma up until Shita. So if I was registered on two animals, I have to know which one was offered first. When the one that was offered first was offered for me, that automatically created a withdrawal from the other animal. And we'll see how this affects various dinam. The second part of the Mishnah that also has various cases won't be about an animal getting lost and the group sending one shliach or someone on their own going to buy, to find it, while others brought animal bays. What happens if me and you, we have different groups, the animals never got lost, but our animals got mixed. And now we don't know which animal belongs to which group. And that's going to link the end of today's daf to the beginning of today's daf, to the, to the top of Tzadik Chesam Adalev, and that is, is that once an animal was designated as a Pesach, it may never be, even for one instant, minui less or ownerless. And that is going to affect the system, the takana that Chazal gave us, how to rectify that situation. We have to just make sure that one of the original owners of the Pesach will remain on that Pesach. And there's ways of making that happen, and therefore both animals will be allowed to be brought, and many, many more details. So, Chevra, let's start on Naftzai Ches Amadalif, right all the way, second line from the top of Amid, beginning with the Gemara. Baruch Atoadi no Yelohinu Melech Oelam Shahak on Limadvari. So, as we just reviewed the Mishnah by heart, and that says the Gemara, Amar Afuna Bereid Rabbi Yeshua, Shma Mino Tlas from our Mishnah, Shma Mino, we extrapolate three rules. Number one, Shema Mino Balei Chaim Nidachim. That even a living animal could become permanently rejected. Now obviously if there's a problem which disallows an animal to be brought as a carbon, no one debates that this animal may not be brought. The question is, if the cause of the rejection goes away, 
Does the status of ach, it was rejected, does it stay on the animal? And as we will learn later today, that the Tana Rab Shimon holds, that an animal can only become permanently rejected after Shechita. While it's still alive, it cannot become permanently rejected. And how does that affect our Mishnah? I'll tell you how it affects our Mishnah. That the Mishnah first case was a person designated the female for a Pesach. Now guys, a Pesach has to be male. If you remember, both an Eula and a Shlamim can be male and female. So once this animal, as the Mishnah says, is not going to be brought as a Pesach, okay, but this animal, a should be allowed to be brought Right, as a shlamim. The Mishnah and the Reisha says that this animal is not brought as a shlamim. Right, this animal has to be blemished and then sold, and only the money, its value, is used for a shlamim. If we wouldn't say, Balichaim Nidachim, so the moment we're going to switch it from Pesach to shlamim, that Bechal, it's, it's a non issue. It's a non issue. Is that ayah that Balichaim, not like the Tan of Shimon, once since you said it's a Pesach, and as a Pesach, it's rejected because it's a female or because it's, it's beyond the first year, then it's considered a dichoi that remains that way. Number two, shmami no, dichoi mei kara have dichoi. This is Mamash appreciated, continuing with what we learned in the last half and a half. That what? That if something was never rejected, it's the only problem for a carbon is if it, it's rejected. Now you would argue that it was rejected from the outset. There was never a moment that this animal was ro'oi to be a Pesach. It was not nira v'nitcha. It wasn't fit and then rendered rejected. From the outset you designated a female animal or an animal that's beyond the year. And one might have argued that's not even called rejected. It never entered for you to expel it. And if that would have been the case, then again the animal itself would have been used for a shlamim. The Mishnah says that the animal itself cannot be used for a shlamim. And number three, Ushmami, and by the way, Dichumi, Kara Havi Dichoi, is also a subject to a Machloikis Tanoim. And a Mesech to Sukkah, the Art Tanoim that hold that if it's not Nira Venitcha, it's not called Dichoi. And number three, now this number three is not subject to any Machloikis. The first one was, Balechaim Nedachim is Machloikis Chachamim and Abshimin. The next Machloikis is a Tanoim in, in Mesech to Sukkah. Shmami no Yesh Dichoi Bidamim means as follows. When it comes to Kedusha by Kachim, there are many levels of holiness, but it's correct to generally divide them into two categories. You have that which only has Kedusha's Domin. Its value is consecrated to God. What I say by value is, is that this item cannot be used in a Avoida, because there is no Avoida. If you designate, I don't know, if you designate paint, if you designate a table for the Beis HaMikdush, it gets monetary holiness, Kedusha's Domin. It's a lower level of holiness. And then you have items that go on the altar. They are called items that, that, that receive Kedushas Haguf. There were sometimes people that used the word Kedushas Mizbeach. The emesis, it's really three levels. Kedushas Haguf and Kedushas Mizbeach is not mamish the same, but for our discussion, we can put it in the same group. Now, the same concept. The animal that's a female, since you designated it as a Pesach, from the outset, it never got Kedusha Saguf. A female animal cannot be used as a Pesach. An animal that's over one year can never be used for a Pesach. It never received Kedusha Saguf. And you might have thought, even though no Tana subscribes to this, that what... Wait, wait, wait. You, said, you said female? Female, anim female animal cannot be used for a Pesach. It could be used for a Shlamim. It cannot be used for a Pesach. Okay, so only a male. Turkey. Only a male, only a male lamb or a male goat. And since this animal was never going to be offered on the altar, so it never got kedusha saguf. And one might have thought, and something that only has kedushas damim cannot be rejected. The whole concept of ah, you're rejected is only on something which is even holier. But that's not the case. Obviously, even though there's only kedushas damim, yes, it's rejected and it's permanently rejected. And that's the whole vart of the Mishnah. And again, just adding the Toysvis. If you manage to get the animal blemished passively by letting it graze, and you get and you sell it, and you have the funds before Pesach, you can buy a carbon Pesach with it. You don't have to buy a carbon shlamin. But practically, when does a person designate a Pesach for a Pesach? Close to the Yamtiv. Animals don't get blemished in one second. Mestama, by the time it's going to get blemished, it's going to be after Pesach, but you have to use its money for a shlamim. It can never be used as a shlamim. Okay. Vaitir in the Mishnah. 
Says the Gemara, Tana Rabban. I'm a mafresh pischoi. Now that goes to the top of the, to the second in the Mishnah. Second in the Mishnah is, is that an animal was designated. Let's say it was designated only by one person. So you have one registrant. And then this person passes away. Even though the son is a Yoyrish, we don't say that the animal always had someone registered on it. We don't view it that way. From when the father passed away, even if the son will choose to say, ah, I will bring this animal for a carbon Pesach, the animal remained for one instant or more, minui less, ownerless. And our Mishnah holds that once a Pesach becomes minuless, it's no longer fit to be brought as a Pesach. The million dollar question is, if that's the case, the Mishnah should have says it should, left, it should be left to graze and sold and its, its funds, its proceeds should be used for shlamim. That's not what the Mishnah says on top of the Amit. The Mishnah says on top of the Amit that the animal itself is brought l'shem shlamim. Hamafrish pischoi v'chulei, he says the Gemara Tondra Abanan, Hamafrish is pischoi v'ameis. So I guess, im b'noi memune imoi, if the son prior to the passing of the father was already registered with his father, which is most of the cases. As we learned, you know, actually, a father automatically would register for sure as minor children. Okay, and as we learned all of those pratim, whether he needs consent, whether for, from the wife, uh, she has the power to protest, but he, he, even without her asking him, she's automatically included. In other words, if the son was included, I don't care if the, now one passed away, so you have less registrants, you have at least one. And therefore, says the Braisa, Yivi and Olushem Pesach. However, but if the son was not registered with the father while the father was alive, so then the din is that if the father passes away, Mamish, like it says in our Mishnah, just the, the Braisa adds the detail the son with him, the son not with him, Yivi and Olushem Shlamim, the animal itself is to be brought for a Shlamim. Another detail, when on the 16th, which is the first day Chalamoid in the Holy Land, says the Gemara, ah, liyudvav in, letezvav loy. Why? Because our Tana holds that nedarim and nedavos ain't kerevin beyantif. That private donated karbanis, including shlamim, are not brought on yantif itself. This is a machlekes, a mesachtas beitza. And our Tana subscribes that it's not brought. That's just a detail, so you can't bring it on the first day of yantif. And you know, the other Tana would argue, on yantif, guys, we are obligated to have shalmei chagiga. And Shalmei Simcha. So why not bring a Shlamim? Because it's different. This is something that it's your private Shlamim. You can sacrifice it on Yom Tif. Now asks the Gemara that the Mishra of Amos, exactly when did the father pass away? Guys, let's remember what we learned in the last two Dafim. If the father passed away before midday, which means that when the time of obligation came, the son could, uh, could have already registered on the animal, then why does it say, that as long as the son was registered with the father, the animal is brought for a Pesach. Now there's another very important issue over here. The Braisa didn't say that there were other people as well. We are learning that this is true even if these were the only people, the father or only the father and the son. Now, guys, let's go back to the sugi of Aninus. Yes, Aninus is only b'yoyim midoy raisa, agreed. But if you remember, when we began the first Mishnah, we spoke out to Rashi, that if the only person registered on the animal is an oinim, and the person was not yet buried, which means that there's a chance that during burial, the, the relative will become Tomei, then the carbon may not be brought. Frekti gemara hochala Aninus ilavi meikaram. Before this man of Pesach, he was already an Oinon, and we learned in the Mishnah Daf Tzadik Aleph that a carbon Pesach rabbinically may not be brought for this person because of the fear he might become Tomei. And the only solution is it must be that the Brais is speaking about that the father passed away after mid after mid afternoon. And that's a nuance that we're adding over here, that when did the Chachamim say that we are afraid that the Oinan will become Tomei, and therefore a carbon Pesach should not be slaughtered for only an Oinan? That's the top of Tzadik Aleph. Other people and the Oinan, it's fine, but not only for the Oinan, that's only if first he became an Oinan, and then he becomes Mukhoiv and bringing a Pesach. If first the obligation of Pesach is Chal on the person, then this person will be careful not to contaminate himself. Ah. So, so slaughtered, not eaten. 
So not only slaughtered Baruch, but eaten, because even though Aninus Midrabanan for other Kachim will apply at night, but because of the gravity of the Kares connected to Pesach, Chachamim, that's one of the three, remember Rava, that they waived their rabbinic decree, and we don't care that during the time of the slaughter he's not fit. During the time of the slaughter he's not fit biblically, but during the time of the eating he'll become fit. Oh, so now we got a problem. So if we're the is speaking about afternoon, now comes the bomb question. <clears throat> if the sun was not with him, and this is really what we had in the Mishnah, <laughs> this animal is brought. What did we learn in the last two days? That once noon, ta- noon time comes, it's already entering the afternoon, so now this animal is fixed as a Pesach, once it's fixed as a Pesach, if there is an invalidation in it, it becomes rejected. And once it becomes rejected, yeah, you, can let, you, should, you, should, you should use its funds for a shlamim. So, yira ache yistav. Or if the case wasn't the female, tir, whatever, you let it pasture. But that, that you bring it as a shlamim, how can that be? It's a bomb question, really. It's a seed and the Mishnah. But it's beautiful that we're using this b'risa to clarify. Don't tell me that, that that is because the father passed away before noon. So there was no kivius of chatzois in the b'risa. You can't learn that way. <clears throat> this is a phenomenal question. And we have five answers. Wow. Answer number one says the Gemara either Amar Rav or Amar Rav. It must be the b'risa. The fact that the animal itself was brought as a shlamim. That the father passed away before noon. What was now the kasha? The kasha is, how can this animal be brought? You have an issue with oinen. If someone is an oinen, before this man, chiyuv is chal, a carbon may not be brought only for the oinen. I know it's a rabbinic law, but they stood that they, that law is not waived. So the Gemara says he didn't understand the b'raisa. Ma yivienu l'shum Pesach? Not enachanami, not Pesach rishoyim. For Pesach sheni. Now, by the way, if Pesach Rishon was brought for him, he'll be yoitz in the mitzvah. He could have included himself on another carbon. The Bryce is not advocating for him not to bring it. Guys, if someone is an oinen, if de facto they don't become Tomei, you can't bring a carbon only for them. That was the Mishnah and Sadiq Aleph. But part of a group, no problem. But if he did not bring Pesach Nishan, then you bring it for a Pesach Sheni. Answer number two, Abayi Amar. That you have to, it's a Dodin Ketonic. This is a classical answer. You have to divide the Brice into two different cases. I know you wanted everything to work either before noon or afternoon. It doesn't work that way. When the Brice, Meis Achar Chatzois, if the father passed, after, passed away after midday, then if B'nai Memona Imai, which means that what? That uh, number one, the Chiyuv of Pesach was Chal before Aninus. And therefore, you could bring it only for him. And it never, re- and it never remained minuiless. Because the Benoi was registered with the father before the father passed away. Then Yevienu Lushum Pesach. And he'll be careful and he won't be, become Tommy. Meis Koydem Chatzoy, you have to add that. But if the father passed away before midday, then if and the beauty here is, my friends, is that here the animal was never nitcha at all. You understand? Because it wasn't, there was no, there was no kivius of Pesach yet for, for it to be rejected. Then yevienu l'shum shlamim. Now, yevienu l'shum shlamim, hold on. If the father passed away before Chatzois, why doesn't he bring it for Pesach? Because if he becomes an oinen before the Chiyuv of Pesach, for him you don't bring the carbon Pesach. Givaldik. Rav Shiravia gives a third answer. Lo'ilam, the whole B'raith is speaking about the same scenario where the Mis Lachar Pesach. And he's adding a very important uh, a new, he's introducing a new nuance. There's a status, there's a state in, in Halachim of you are alive, then there is a state of death, and then you have a state of someone who is in the throes of death. And there are many halachas about that state. So when we say that, ah, halacha generally says that when we have to save a life no matter how, no matter what, it's, yeah, well, it's a correct statement, but it's not, it's not 100% correct. 
Once a person is in a state of a goises, there are many different halachas that come into play. Now, how does that answer the question? Let's look inside Rashi, 14 lines before the bottom of the Amid that speaks through every single scenario of the answer of Rab Shiravio. Shahoya Aviv Goises Bachatsois. I hope you get it. It's like Mamush in the middle of the wide lines under the Gemara. Now, the father passed away after midday. He was already a Goises before Chatsois, but he passed away after Chatsois. So Rashi speaks at both sides. Im if benoi nimne imai yivyenu l'shem pesach. Then the benoi brings it. It never was ownerless. The and not only that, since the father de facto passed away after midnight, so his chiyuv of pesach was chal before aninus. That's the chiddush that we're learning today. So the chachamim didn't say you can't bring it for him. You could bring it for him. He will become. He will be careful. He won't become tummy. The chal alei chiyuv the pesach bedeisha bedeisha meanings before aninus. However, But if the son was not pre-registered with the father, then this animal itself, it's not nitcha. The animal itself is brought for Ashlam. The question is why? So says Rashi, because since by midday the father was a goises, and Halacha says that someone who is already in this phase of in the death throes, Roiv goises and will die. It's amazing. So we loy kovate chatzois. In other words, an animal that had one registered on it by Chatzois is a, is a carbon Pesach. Then if it's rejected, you're out. Never will it be brought as a Shlamim. You can't say that this animal was fixed. If the son was not registered, the animal was only had only one registrant. Who? A Goises. It's not called a registrant. Beautiful. Back in the Gemara. Answer number four. Ravashi Omar Lo'olam Demis La'achar Chatzois. And that takes us back to the first of the three Shmaminos. This Braisa, and according to what we're saying, our Mishnah, the Reisha, and the Seifa are not following the same Tana. When we learned in the Mishnah, the Nekeva, the, the after, two, after a year old, Ben Shtei Shanim, and the Mishnah says that, that Yira Ache Yistoev, that's the Chachanim. But the Seifa of the Mishnah and the Braisa follows Rab Shimon that holds that ain't Bali Chaim Nidachin. Gewaldik. So, when there's a problem, you can't bring it as a Pesach. But the moment it becomes a Shlamim, so the problem, here the problem is, is that a Pesach has to always have someone registered. It can never be uh, minui less, okay? But there's no such a thing by a Shlamim. I don't care about that. There's no minui by a Shlamim. So the moment it becomes a Shlamim, the cause for its rejection goes away. And the Tanar Shimon holds that as long as the animal was not yet slaughtered, there is no pure rejection by a Balechaim. And Al Picha, see this, how beautiful is that? That we are hopefully alive, and which is why we, are, we can never be rejected. We can be temporarily rejected, but as tshuva, as long as we're living, we can do tshuva. Now, the doichik is, is that it's not a doichik on the Braisa. By the way, the Gemara is not saying that this is the Mishnah. I'm saying that if he would have said it in the Mishnah, then you would have to say Reisha Seifa. And Avino Omar, the final answer, Kugoyin, Shefri Shuach Achatzois. You only designated the animal, the father, after midday. And obviously, the father passed away after Chatzois. So what? It's so what? It, everything. Let's go back the final time to Rab Zayd and Rabba. How great is that? That our Braisa holds not that the Shechita is Koiveya, that Chatzois is Koiveya. So since when Chatzois came in, the animal wasn't even designated for a Pesach. So there was no Kivius. Moiradik. So if there's no Kivius, there's no rejection. Now the animal cannot be brought for a Pesach because if the son was not registered with the father, it remained a moment without any registration. But the concept of Dichoy, even Dichoy Meikhara, right, has to happen when Chatzois, if af, you only began after Chatzois, right? So then it was never fixed for it to become rejected. The last line of Rashi before the Mishnah. The Kivan, the Bachatzois, Adayin, Loi Hufrash, Ein, Kan, Keva, Litchois. And our Tana, therefore, must hold, guys, that's the sheet of Rab Zayda, right? That Chatzois is Koiveya. And not, and not like Rabo, right? Shechito. No, like Rabzeira. Koydem chatzois, la'achar chatzois.
Okay, Chavre, moving on to the next Mishnah. Sorry, can you just clarify that? So Chatzais came in, but he had not yet... The animal was nothing. Since the animal was nothing, all of the dinam that we are learning about, about an animal becoming rejected, becomes irrelevant. Even though, guys, even though he designated the Pesach. If he would have brought, but he never brought it. He never lived to bring it. He designated the Pesach and then he passed away. So how do we make it a shlamim? So I guess to say that this animal, the son can go ahead and say and bring it as a Pesach, that we can't say. That we can't say. Why can't we say that? Because it was already designated as a Pesach and it remained one moment minui less. This animal cannot be brought as a Pesach. But to say that this animal has the status of a rejected animal, you can't say that. Because during Chatzoyitz, during the Zman Achi of this animal, Bechlal was not the Oyla Allah Shulchan. It wasn't even here. It's amazing. The rejection is connected. You can only be kicked out if you were invited in. If you're not in, you can never be kicked out. It was never in. Let's go right there. Even though, and, and, and more than that, Danny, and even though the sun may not bring it as a Pesach, but the din of a dichoy is only shayech when the animal was a Pesach over, over the time of the chiv. When the chatzois came, Pesach. Okay, next Mishnah. Ha Pesach shenas orev bizvachim. Not bizevach. So that she gives an example that you had your Pesach, an animal. And you have a carbon asham and you have a carbon oila. Now, aside of the fact of the matan damim, right, we, we should say this every day in davening that a pesach is nitan be matana achas, keneged ha yesoid, an oila and a shlamim, shtaim shein arba, but when it comes to the dinam of eating, the mamish different, right? The pesach is eaten by all the menuyim. When it comes to an asham, it's only eaten by kaihanim. An oila bachlal is not eaten. We had a lot of these mishnais and zvachim. What do you do now? Okay, and the, the case is very simple because you have three animals, each one is different. Right, in Zvachim, we're going to learn about the uh, majority. Simple, three animals, each one is another carbon. What do you do? How can you bring one for what? So you know what you do, says the Mishnah, that kulam yiru achi isto avu. All of them have to be led to the pasture. And you have to wait for all of them to get blemished. And all of them are sold. But here is the Chiddush. Let's say from the three animals, one is worth $100, one is worth 90 one is worth 80 uh, Halavai, guys, when Mashiach is coming, an animal, who will be paying up $5,000. Anima, animals are expensive, and the prices will go up. But we'll make a lot of money, Chavra. God will bless us. Anyway, 190 and 80. So the question is, what do you do? Every animal, you're going to take the money and you're going to buy what? You're going to buy another animal for an oil? Which money will you use? For every animal, you have to presume maybe the money, the most valuable one, was the oil? So you're going to have to spend $100 on the oil and then $100 on the asham and $100 for a Pesach. Which means that you will go out of pocket. You have to always use the value of the animal that was the most expensive for each of the three karbanos. And therefore, so you'll, become, you'll go out of pocket. Because each animal that you buy has to be equivalent to the most valuable animal of the three. Okay, and another, another detail. What are you doing with the money of the Pesach? Well, if you manage, like we learned the first Tosfos, if you, if you manage to have all this happen before Pesach, then use the money to buy a Pesach. If this happened, you know, the first animal was relatively close to Pesach. And by the time it got blemished, this time you brought another animal. If that happens, then with the money you buy a shlamim. No problem. Next, next thing in the Mishnah. What happens if Nasad of Bibachoyroiz? And look inside Rashi, two lines before the bottom of the Amid. Here we're speaking about one Pesach and one Bechor. Now, here, all of the blood of Oida, Unlike the case of the Reisha, where the blood avoid of the Pesach is not like the blood avoid of the Asham and the Oila, it says Rashi, Shematan Domon of a Bukhar. And Omatan Domon of Pesach Shava. Also, the Ain to Unum to Nufas Chazay Vishoik. Also, the Lois Michon In other words, the avoid is the same. Not exactly. We'll point out on the Gemara here where it's not the same. So, says our Mishneh, the last line in the Amit Abshimon says, Gavaldik, no problem. As long as this Pesach belongs to Kayhanim, as does the Bukhar, 
Im chaburas kaihanim, then yoy chelu. Nothing has to be resolved. The avoida, like all of the de- de- details of the avoida, are the same. The only problem is who's going to eat it. Well, if the owners of both the pesach is eaten by anyone, the bechayit belongs to the kohen. I'm a chaya. So it's a non-issue, but there is an issue. There's a chiddush here. Daf tzadik chesam base says the gemara. Ah, ah, hold on. That's the big line we have to remember from kachim. We can never expose a carbon, that's the words, to a situation of invalidation. Chazal used the words, I'll tell you one thing simple. Everything is the same, but Pesach has to be eaten either biblically until midnight or only rabbinically until midnight. You have until uh, the crack of dawn, until Alois. A Bukhar is like a Shlomo. A Bukhar can be eaten for two days and one night. So, what, what, so hold on a second over here. In other words, what you're saying is, is that the Kahanim have to eat both Karbanis as if it's a Pesach. And if they don't, then they'll have to be Mahmed and say it's Noisar. Even though one of these two will not be Noisar. So ask the Gemara of HaKamai Seikach Shalom Sul must be, that's why it explains the Gemara, that's why Rab Shimon is the one that said, as long as the Chabura is of Kahanim, it's a non-problem. Rab Shimon the time, Rab Shimon holds, Mevim Kach Shalom Beis Sul. What is, the pro- what is the problem to eat both of them in one night? Because what happens if you won't? In other words, if Hashem gives us a, a more lenient way of consumption, either by more people or in a greater area, kachim kalom, kachim kachim, or more time, if you take one and you limit it, and you limit it because you say it might be another one, then you might make it invalid when it's not invalid. Verstehst what is the pshat of Medim Kochim the Pesach? So we're, not allowed to, we're, we're not allowed to cause Kochim to become unnecessarily invalidated. Push it. You know, the Ebershad gave certain restrictions. Now, every, uh, certain Karbanis have less restrictions. Don't be a Machman. I'm going to, you're only male Kohanim and I'm only going to shecht it with Safa and you're limiting it. Because what happens if you didn't keep those restrictions? Then it becomes invalid. Then maybe it's really not invalid. And the Tanan, guys, this is a Mishnah in Zvachim. Similar case. Our Mishnah was a Pesach and a Bukhar. What happens if an Asham got mixed with the Shlamim? Now here, now here guys, re- remember the rules. That an Asham and a Shlamim have the same blood avoido. But that's it. Because they both, Shtaim Shein Arba. Other than that, think about it. Asham is Kachik Kachim. Asham can only be eaten by male Koyhanim. Asham can only eat my male kayanim in the Azara. Shlomim can be eaten also by the owners. Shlomim can be eaten in Yerushalayim. Oh, Asham can only be eaten that day in one night. Shlomim can be eaten for two days in one night. No, it's the every step of its eating, the Shlomim is more lenient. So on that, Rabbi Shimon says, no problem. Doesn't bother him. He says, you know, there's no issue here. Why? Because apply the stringencies of the Asham on both. That Yishchatu only in the northern part of the Azara. Guys, there's a three-way machlekes tanoim. Exactly where is the tzofin? Doesn't matter, wherever that is. And kachim kalim can be slaughtered anywhere lifnei Hashem in the Azara. And v'yoichlu kechamesh abahem. That's a lot. That means it can only be eaten by Melkoyhanim. It can only be eaten in the Azara. It can only be eaten for one day and one night. Yeah, like you said, Shlom, who cares? In other words, it, it, not, you can eat it in a way where miman afshach. Amrulai, so they tell Rab Shimon, Okay, so now the Gemara wants to know, now that we clarified that our Mishnah is Rab Shimon, according to the Chachamim, what should we do if the Pesach got mingled with the Bukhar? Now, let me add another detail. Don't say, ah, let them get blemished. No, 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 no. Bukhar, the Torah says in Parshas, Koirach loy sivde. And not only should you not redeem a Bukhar, we will learn this again when we come to Bukhairas. If you redeem a Bukhar, guys, it's amazing. The animal remains holy, the money remains holy, and it doesn't, it's not effective, it doesn't work. So, wait until both of them get blemished. Now, the Yavi Behema Shemena bring, Shemena is based on the first din of the Mishnah. Fat animal brings, bring a third animal that is at least as valuable as the more expensive of the two. And you should make the following statement. Kol Hecha, the Isla Pesach. One of these two is a Pesach. 
is tochol alei dahai. Because once it's blemished, now you can redeem it. So you don't know which one you're redeeming. So bring the third new animal in front of both of the two that got mixed up. Now they're both redeemed. And now what? Well, a Pesach that's redeemed becomes almost chulen. But one of them is a Bechor. And now the Achelohu betrayed us Bechor Bar Mum. Guys, a Bechor Bar Mum, that's not Kachem Lebe Sabsul, it's property of the Koyen. And by the way, we're going to learn in Bechoyedus, it's not so posh. A Bechoyed Balmum can be eaten by anyone, by anyone. It belongs to the coin, it can, but there's rules. Remember, you can't sell it in a marketplace. Remember, you can't weigh the meat in a proper weight because since it was fit to go on the altar, so there's a, as a residue of Kedusha and respect we have to give to it, but that will be the only solution. Rab Shimon has no problem. Rab Shimon holds that you are allowed to bring Mevim Kachim Olvei Sapsul, so you don't have to wait for it to get blemished. Okay, Chavra, we're learning a Mishnah. It's a very simple Mishnah. Like we spoke out in the intro, generally, we're going, to be, we're going to speak about two different scenarios. One scenario is, is that a group lost their Pesach. The original Pesach, just for consistency, we'll call Pesach Aleph. Now, they're going to, there's going to be a time that the whole group is worried about them not finding it, and they appoint one Shliach, please, you go look for it. And as the shliach went to look for it, they said, you know what? Who says he'll succeed? Let's buy a, P- a Pesach base. In the case that I just mentioned, the shliach was never included in Pesach base. Then there's going to be a time where the shliach, before he goes, he says, guys, I'm going to look for it, but if I don't find it, buy a base for me. There's going to be many nuances of who appointed who, who was aware of a what. If they were both found and they were both brought, that will be the first part of the mission. The second part of the mission will be when you have various groups that the, the Pesach never ran away. But our group, this is so common. Think about in the Beis HaMikdash, there's going to be thousands of Karbonis. If our animal gets mixed with your animal, what do we do? So not like Pesach with an Asham, Pesach with an Oilo, Pesach with a Bukhar. No, Pesach with a Pesach, this is the most likely scenario that can happen. Guys, this is the last Mishnah of the Kachim part of Pesachim. Let's really enjoy it. Says the Mishnah. Enjoying learning Torah is part of the mitzvah. One bird, Chevre, we lost our Pesach. And so they tell one, one guy from the group, we'll call him the Shliach, say, please go, don't give up on the animal, don't give up on anyone, go find the animal. So Shliach goes to find the animal Pesach Aleph. And you know what? He was successful. On the other hand, the Mishalechim, the Mishalchim, they were not so uh, sure that he's going to find it. So to cover their bases, he went to look for an al- al- animal, Aleph, Pesach Aleph, the Heim Lakhu, they bought a new one. And they shechted the new one. They were afraid that the Shliach won't find it on time. Now, says, says, the, says the Mishnah, if we know Im Shaloi Nishchat Rishoin, Shaloi guys means Pesach Aleph. So then, who Oichal Mishaloi? The Shliach eats from it. And not only that, Veheim Oilchem Imoi Bishaloi, they will eat from Pesach Aleph. Why will they eat from Pesach Aleph? Because if Pesach Aleph was brought before Pesach Beis, a person cannot be registered on two Pesachim. Al, number one. Number two, the fact that they never withdraw themselves. When, until when can you withdraw? Until the Shechita. So when Shechita of Pesach Aleph happened, that act made them withdraw from Pesach Beis. Yechap. So it's really, they, they, they had two optional animals. So the first one will be effective. And then a Hanami. So they are now included as they were originally on the original Pesach that we're calling Aleph. But that also made them w- be withdrawn because they're no longer obligated to bring a Pesach on Pesach number base. That means Pesach base was brought for whom? For no one. It was minuiless. What did we learn also today? That if a Pesach becomes minuiless, it's invalid. And therefore, what happens with, pe- with Pesach Beis, the mission doesn't spell it out, but Rashi says, Pesach Beis has to be burnt. It's completely invalid. Guys, we're good? Next. Next case. Now, what happens? Yes. Is this going according to Rabbah? 
the, the, the opinion about it, it's all about the actual speaker? No, 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 no. The, the irrele- it, it, nothing to do, Danny. Nothing to do. It has to do with the rule that you can't be registered on two animals. It has to do with the fact that even if, even though according to Rab Shimon, you can withdraw until the Zrika, it's not Negea. That if, 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 if there were two people having me in mind, and I appointed both of them, so which Pesach will be mine? The one that was brought first, we had that before. And, and not only that, I am automatically withdrawn from the second. Further, now what happens, Ve'im shalohem nishchatrishon, this is if we know, this is not so common. But if we will know that Pesach Beis was brought first, so listen, guys, the shliach was never appointed on Pesach Beis. Heim oichlen nishalohem, they will eat from Pesach Beis, they cannot eat from Pesach Halav. You know why they can't eat from Pesach Halav? Because since they were now Manui on Beis, when you shechted Beis, that is a withdrawal from the group other than the Shliach from Pesach Aleph. But Pesach Aleph, it was not brought for no one because the group abandoned the Shliach. You understand? They brought it for themselves. They didn't do it for him. So even though Pesach Beis was brought first, it was never brought for the guy who went looking for Pesach Aleph. Which is a good thing, because now the animal had one person that was money on it. The problem will be, What happens if we discover later both animals were brought, but we don't know, Or, or, if they were both brought at the same time. Now this is a sugya that comes up in many other areas. Guys, here, listen to the words. Efshar letzamtzem or e efshar letzamtzem. Hashem can make two things happen exactly at the same time. Can human beings, right, do two acts? I'm doing my act, action. You're doing your action. And even though to us it appeared that it was at the same time, is it possible for us to be metzamtzem? So we're gonna follow the shita in halacha. That we, halachically we say that when human beings do things, it's always one will be before the other. It might be a split second, it might be a hundredth of a second, it might be a trillionth of a second. Which means that even though it appears that it happened at the same time, no, halacha will say no, one happened before the other, but we don't know. Same kind. So you have a doubt. Now, guys, appreciate the problem over here. Now, in the first case of the Mishnah, he, the beauty here is, is that the group did not include the shliach, which is so advantageous here. Because at least his animal, he can eat his animal. Like we mentioned, they didn't bring it for him. For him it's irrelevant which animal came first. The only animal that he was money on was an al- Pesach Aleph. Problem is them. They cannot eat of either animal. It's amazing. They fulfilled their obligation because wh- whichever one came first was for them. But how can they eat from Pesach Aleph when maybe Pesach Beis was brought for, first, which made them withdraw from Pesach Aleph. Or, how, and the same thing in the reverse. They can't eat from Pesach Aleph. Why? Because there's a possibility that their animal came first. How can they eat from Pesach Aleph if Pesach Beis was their animal? And also, they can't eat from theirs. They can't eat from theirs because maybe Pesach Aleph was first. So they were withdrawn from Pesach Beis. The beauty is, is that eat. Are you talking about the split second difference? Correct, correct, Baruch, correct, correct. We're speaking about that even though it looked like at the same moment, Halach is going to say it really did not happen at the same moment. It could have been in a fraction of a fraction of a second, and therefore it's we who don't know which one came first. So the Shliach was only connected to one, he can eat it. The group, which were connected to both, we don't know which one came first. They may not eat. Based, this is all the our Tanoim following Omarav Gidal Amarav. That even though the whole mitzvah of Pesach is when you slaughter it, it needed to be fit for someone to eat. But if de facto no one ate from it, Akiva is not, Achila is not Ma'akiv. So it was fit. They were fit to eat it. They just tech, they don't know which one. So therefore, Yatzal Abay Sasrefa. The animals... Their animal will have to be burnt because no one can, none of them can eat it. But on the other hand, ah, that's the beauty of Turim Elasa is Pesach Sheini. Because Mimanafshach, one animal was brought for them. They fulfilled their obligation. Not was then, they can't eat from either one. Now, similar but the reverse. What's similar and reverse? So again, a group designated animal, we'll call that Pesach Aleph. 
Now, Omar Lohem, the group was, one went on his own to find Pesach Aleph, and the Shliach tells the group, not the group tells the Shliach, go find it. One person takes the initiative to go look for Pesach number one, and he tells them, listen, I'm going to look for it. I might not find it on time. Do me a favor. Im echarti, I might delay, I might find it too late. So tzu v'shacha tu alai. Have me in mind, get Pesach number base and shech base for me. Now the shliach is connected to Aleph and base, but the group gave up on Aleph. So now everything is in the reverse. If the shliach goes and he finds Pesach Aleph and he brings Pesach Aleph and they also went and Lakhu Vishachatu. Now, guys, don't forget in this case, when they bought Pesach Base, they, they bought it also for the shliach. They bought it also for the shliach. So I guess, Im Shalohem. Shalohem is Pesach Base from the group. Im Shalohem Nishchat Rishain. So not only does the group eat on Pesach base because they only were connected to Pesach base, but since in this case the shliach appointed the group, bring it on my behalf, for who oichal imahem, he will also eat from Pesach base because he was included in it. And if the opposite, we know, right, the im shaloi nishchat rishon, which means Pesach Aleph was slaughtered first. Then who oichel mishaloi? He will eat from Pesach Aleph because he was connected to both animals. And what is the rule then that whichever one is brought first works for you? And that automatically makes you withdraw from the other one. And they, they, in the second case of the Mishnah, they were no longer connected to Pesach Aleph. They only were connected to Pesach Beis. And here, no chamal. Or even if we think that they were both slaughtered at the same time, based on our Mishnah Shita, that E, F, Sher, Litzamtzim, so we really don't know which one came first. So like this, here in the reverse, animal base is a non-problem, because Pesach base, the group was connected to base. I don't care which one came first, they were no longer connected to, to the first. So hey, Meichel Mishalahem. But the Shliach, who was connected to both Pesach Aleph and to Pesach base, he's now in trouble but not real trouble, meaning he fulfilled his obligation. Whichever one was brought first is good, but he can't eat either of them. And at least because he fulfilled his obligation with whichever one was brought first. Okay, now, final case in the first part of the Mishnah. Group designated Pesach Aleph. The, 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 the little Shepseler make a dash for its life. He wants to live. He's running away. So when the Shliach went chasing it, they both communicated to each other by making it clear. The group told him, go find it, which means they want to still be connected to Pesach Aleph. He tells the group, when you guys buy, when you guys buy Pesach base, have me in mind. So everyone is connected to both. Meaning, whichever one will be brought first will be valid for that group. So let's speak it out. Says the Mishnah. That oichlin kulam in addition. So the rule will be that whichever one was brought first will go for everyone, both for the group and for the shliach. And if the im eni yudua ezim nishchat rishoyin, the Mishnah doesn't even have to repeat. Or if it appeared that it was shachlet at the same time, halachically we don't know. So here, shnei em yoytzim labeis asreifa, and again, the Mishnah doesn't have to speak out, and all are exempt from Pesach Sheni because one of them, one of these two animals came first, and therefore they, everyone fulfilled their obligation. But what happens, I'm sorry, now is the final case of the first part of the Mishnah. The fourth case. So when he went chasing after Aleph, they were already withdrawn. When they bought Pesach Beis, they did not do it for him. So the din is ein achroim zelozeh. Then no one is connected to the other, which is so advantageous here, because here there's no confusion. I don't care which one came first, and I don't care if we don't know which one came first. The shliach is connected to Aleph, the group is connected to Beis, and as long as each carbon was done during the afternoon, I'm a shalom al Yisrael. Oh, now comes a new case in the Mishnah. Not about an animal running away and you're looking for it and you're getting another one. No, nothing, no one ran away. We're together. But our animals made as a, as a simchastoida dance around the bima. And now we don't know who, which one is which. 
how are we going to do that? You know, on the luggage today, my, my wife puts us a bendele around the thing. And then everyone's luggage, this is before Corona, now we forgot about all that. Everyone has the same sim, and what do you do then? Everyone has the same luggage, and everyone has the same band. So you have two animals, they looked alike. Oh, before Shechita. Do you tell me what you do now? The, 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 the issue will become compounded, and so will be the solution, based on one cloud we learned again in the beginning of today's daf, which is on top, on top of the Tzadik Ches. That we never allow for a carbon Pesach that was already designated as a Pesach to become, even for one moment, completely minui less. So you can't say, oh, let everyone just withdraw their registration. That would be simple. And, you know, it's, then it's just, you know, it's an animal. And every group pre-registers on the one that the animal that's closest to them. You're not allowed to do that. You have to make sure that at least one of the original group is going to be on that carbon. So here will be the creative solution. Says the Mishnah, Two animals got mixed up together. Each group randomly will select one of the two animals. And, and this is the key. Now you're going to have to have one member of one group going to the other group and one member of the original other group coming to the first group. Gavaldik. Echad me'elu balay eitzel elu and the echad me'elu balay eitzel elu. So now you have, in each group, there is at least one who was a member of the other group and the kachem oimrim, and this is what the original members say. Im sholanu hu ha-pesach hazav, this animal happens to be ours. Then you are a newcomer here. And you, you, you want to fulfill the, the, the new guy. You want to fulfill your mitzvah. No problem. Withdraw from the other one and join us. You can withdraw before Shechita. And Venimnes Al Shalano. And now you're part of us. And if we made a mistake and we took the wrong animal, if the animal that we took was Taka yours, then all of us, we will withdraw from our original animal. And Venimninu Al Shalcha. And the point is that in such a case, the animal was never meaningless. Gavaldik. Yeah, I, uh, in the third case, where you had uh, each of them having each of them in mind for for olive and base of the group and the original, how do you uh, say that's okay when you can't be registered on two animals? Oh. Very good. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the foundation of the first part of the Mishnah Baruch, is that if I did pre-registered onto animals, what will happen automatically is as follows. Whichever animal will be brought first will be the animal, that act of slaughtering will, so to say, confirm my pre-registration, and at the same time, it will withdraw me from the other animal. Let, hold that thought, let's, let's finish the Mishnah. Okay. Now, Says the mission, the same formula coming back over here. If you have five groups, as long as each group at least had five people, which will allow you to have at least one of the original groups on each animal, or if you had ten groups and each group has ten people, then the same formula will, will look. Now, what happens if you don't have that? The mission is not going to spell out here, but it's mama's getting late. But as long as, and then oh, the same thing, each group will take to themselves someone that belonged to every other group. So now, it's, as Avos Yisrael, you're going to make groups. No, it's the five, the, the, the latter, the solution will be that every group will have one member of all the other groups, which is Gavaldic. Or the ten groups, there's one original member in each group. And and they say the same thing that we said before. Now, Invited in the Mishnah, Shnayim Shunusarva Pischeim. What happens if you only have two people? Now you got a problem. Because if you only have two people, again, we're following that uh, you can bring a Pesach only for one person or not, but you begin with one person, not Negea. What are you going to do now? If you only have two people, then if you're going to leave your animal, then this animal will remain without any owner for an instant. So no problem, says the Mishnah. Even though we don't know which animal belongs to whom, first of all, the same thing. Each group takes an animal for themselves. 
Now, could be I took the wrong animal. I know that. Before I do the next step, I add another person to my group. So let's say there was Reuven and Shimon. We don't know which animal belonged to which, but there was Reuven and Shimon. Reuven now is going to take Levi. He's going to tell Levi, which, whichever one is my animal, you're with me. Verstehst? Shimon is going to take Yehuda. Whichever one is my animal, you're with me. And now, I know we don't know which animal belongs to whom. Doesn't matter. Each group has two people. So, and now you make the switch over. In other words, Reuven will go now to the Pesach that, which, that was chosen by Shimon. Shimon is going to go to the animal... Uh, uh, Reuven is going to go to the page. So Shimon is going to go to the animal. Now we don't know if they went to the right animal. It doesn't matter because the kachim oimrim im shaliyu apesach. If I came to the animal that was taka originally mine, then your decha meshucha is misholcha. Gewaldik. In other words, you have Reuven and Shimon, and Levi and Yehuda. So the groups now became Reuven and Levi and Shimon and Yehuda. Now you can exchange one from each group, and it, giving the same formula. Then the nimnes al shali the im shalcha apesach. In other words, like this, no Pesach remained even for one moment ownerless. To be continued. After shechting, in such a case, they, they after shechting, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second, what about eating it? So they shechted the animal. No, no problem, no problem, no problem. Because before they shechted it, they, they, they were nimmed on that animal. Right. The only key was we can't, once an animal was already registered, you can't have everyone leaving it. No, no, what I'm saying is what happens if they get confused about <clears throat> the pile of meat? Before this happens. Yeah, then you can't, then you, they have to, you have to burn it. <clears throat> everyone fulfilled their obligation, but you have to burn it. Uh, so once it's been shafted, the and you and the meat gets lost in the pile of meat with everybody else's meat, 